Um, all right, I guess I'll start the video. Um, One other thing that I'd like to say before we get started, um, there is a shared notes. Uh, yeah. It's really useful for the present presenter to put uh, links or other notes, but as the uh, workshop progresses, uh, a lot of you might have uh, links or other recommendations, and it's fantastic if people can pop into the shared notes and put those there, because at the end, people can export those shared notes down to their own hard drive, and uh, you don't have to go hunting through the public chat to find the links that you might have missed. Um, all right. Uh, Sounds good. And then... <laughs> All right. I guess we'll hopefully it's a full screen video. I'm also watching the chat too, so that's why I was curious. Uh, but anyways, here we go. All right. All right, there, uh, fellow hackers, freaks, uh, computer geeks, and other cool people that attend something like uh, like Hope. All right, uh, I'm excited. Everyone's uh, gonna be learning some fun stuff with uh, at my workshop. Right? It's called. Uh, Python plus uh, Telnet equals. <laughs> Seriously, that's how you gotta you gotta perfect your evil laugh. All right, so um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna learn some uh, some neat stuff. All right, um, uh, so we're uh, I'm gonna roll right into the next stuff. But uh, come on now, I'm famous for also. Plus, you probably showed up for this, right? You've heard my world-renowned jokes. All right, uh, all right, so. One one good computer computer geeky joke. All right, you ready for this? Uh, all right, what does the uh, what does a baby computer call its father? Data. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's do some fun stuff. All right. All right. Thanks again for uh, joining me with this uh, this fun topic. All right. So I'm going to be showing you uh, basically how to use uh, ancient Telnet. The, uh, to create modern bots, all right, might surprise uh, some of you out there. Uh, my name is uh, William Paul Liggett, and I'm from uh, Junk Text. That's my uh, my small my small company. Uh, and uh, anyways, um, this is obviously that uh, hackers on planet Earth 2020. All right, all right. So let's uh, let's do some fun things. All right. The um, well, I guess here a bit of background on me, just so you know who you're listening to. I guess. Uh, basically, I'm a, a full stack developer, both um, back end and front end uh, aspects, uh, different languages, um, Java, Python, PHP, web stuff, uh, different databases, um, and I uh, I teach as a college professor uh, at two different places uh, currently. Um, one is at uh, Northern Virginia Community College, and the other institution is called a uh, Year Up. It's a it's a nonprofit. Um, so it's pretty cool and then you know I'm also doing this company thing stuff too uh, where basically I, it's like I, I have like custom uh, software that I create or um, I actually create other educational videos and there's a whole bunch of things I don't you know I don't want to limit myself right so anyways uh, I've done a bunch worn different mini hats over time uh, I was working as a, a back and front end developer and things like that I was also at uh, working as an IT project manager um, for uh, like Doing that and sysadmin stuff, uh, in Marine Corps. I was doing a lot of that with the the, uh, the U.S. Defense and Intelligence community. Um, so yeah, uh, different stuff all over the all over the place. Uh, you can see the other stuff. Blah blah blah. I got my education at various places, uh, and I got some certs. All right. Anyways, let's uh, let's go on. All right, here we go. Okay, so um, since I am a uh, since I'm a teacher, okay that maybe I'll be a little bit different than uh, some of the talks that are uh, at Hope. Uh, my thing is, uh, I don't always assume that everybody knows uh, all the details or say even the fundamentals of stuff. So I'm just going to do a quick breakdown just on uh, those that are interested but not really aware of what I'm going to be, you know, later going into. That this way they, they kind of ground it on some stuff that they're not immediately lost. All right, so I'm just going to go over this real quick. Uh, a lot of you, this is going to be, you know, you, you already know this, things like that. But let me just let me just get this out of the way so so everyone's on the same page. All right. Um, so basically, uh, I'm going to be showing how you can use 
uh, the, 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 the capability called Telnet, right? Now, Telnet, which I explained a little bit, uh, a little bit more in depth, a few more slides from now, is uh, often used to connect to what are referred to as a, uh, like a remote terminal. Um, but just in case you don't even know what that means exactly, I'm just doing a quick background on what a terminal is. Okay, so because uh, you know sometimes the newer generation they're always just used to using a mouse to click on things or something visual, or with their smartphone it's all about just your finger touching some app button stuff, right? So, anyways, uh, a terminal. What that's all about? It's a, it's a, properly referred to as a command line interface, a CLI. Okay, and uh, and that's used to talk to a computer, right? So you basically issue commands at it to do different things, uh, and you can explore your computer doing all sorts of kind of fun stuff with terminals. I, if you don't know much about terminals, start you know start local. Well, you gotta you gotta get on this, all right? Because uh, you're you're missing a whole whole situation with your computer, all right? Um, now there is a difference between there's uh, what's referred to as local terminals and then remote terminals. They're basically the same concept. It's just that, like, local. It's just literally on your computer, and you type commands, and it's you're talking. You're basically talking to your computer. Okay. Um, a remote terminal. It's, it's it's the it's the same thing. Okay. It's just that you are actually talking to another computer that you, you're doing that through over a, like a network. That's what's a remote terminal. Okay. Now, um, just in case, the a terminal can also be called many different things, okay? So for instance, you might refer to it as a like a shell. It could be the command prompt. I'm listening to bash. People sometimes say, oh, jump on bash real quick. Bash is actually a program, uh, basically also a programming language. But anyways, that that's uh, one kind of a shell. There's many of these types of programs, by the way. Uh, and this is more popular in, uh, you, you know, Unix-like Unix environment, stuff like that. Um, you might he still hear people talk about like DOS. Um, that was an older system way back in the day. That the new thing, especially if you're on Windows, say Windows 10 or something like that, um, it's technically you don't technically open up DOS. Um, it's actually now called the Windows Terminal. Um, and so a terminal, and say especially for different platforms like Windows or Linux or Mac, um, are similar, but there can be differences of how they are. Okay. I'm not going to go a whole tutorial on terminal stuff. All right, I'm just giving you kind of an orientation of this. All right, now let's uh, let's move on. I'm just going to show you. So, like an example, just in case anybody's still a little confused in what I'm talking about. This is my uh, this is my computer. This is my laptop. I'm running uh, uh, Ubuntu, right? Ubuntu Linux, and um, this is you know, especially if you have any Linux experience, this is very common to do stuff like this. And so this is I just pulled up a terminal. Okay, this program thing, and I'm talking to my computer. So all I'm doing right here is I'm, I was in my home directory. That's with this uh, tilde mark thing. Uh, m maybe oriented on this. This is my username on the system, junk text, right? At and you know I call my all my computers uh, uh, by like uh, uh, you know female names, women, you know, right? I don't know. It's just it's my ladies, right? So uh, the computer I'm using a lot is uh, called Cynthia. All right, uh, it's. I, I don't know any. I'm, I'm not close with any person named Cynthia, so I just I don't know. So it's not it's not about an old girlfriend or something like that. Um, anyways, so this is my computer name. All right, so it's saying like my username at my computer name, and then it's saying w well which directory are you in right now? This tilde is just a shortcut for uh, like your home directory. Um, anyways, moving past that, the dollar sign means I'm not root. Um, I remember that because you. You gotta kind of like work for your money, so you're not like the the most powerful thing. Anyways, that's how I remember it. All I'm doing here is I'm I'm just doing change directory to the root uh, directory, which is like the main directory. So boom, I went in there, and that's why this symbol changed here. And then all I'm doing here, I'm just typing. This is actually ls, not number one. Okay, this is ls for like list of files and folders in this directory. So a bunch of stuff here, like bin boot. CD-ROM, so on and so forth. These are basically all different folders, except for these things in like kind of a different color here. And this is like, uh, yeah, something else. Anyways, uh, and I just press space here, give it a little more white space. 
Uh, and then I'm just doing this, you'll see this uh, reference, just to uh, showcase other uh, concepts in a bit. Um, there's this command you can type with, where it's just like, who am I? Which is like the slide that you just saw before. And what this is doing is, uh, show, basically it's just showing my, my local username, which is just repeating this part, okay? Um, so anyways, that's why it says junk text again here, and then this is just a flashing kind of blinking cursor thing now, waiting for me to type more commands. So anyways, this, I'm just orienting again, this is just a local terminal, all right? Uh, I'm talking to my computer. Now, before I go into the whole remote terminal thing, there's ways to connect remotely to different systems. Historically, what's been around for many, many moons, all right, is this thing called uh, Telnet, all right? Um, so this is an old way to connect to ro remote terminals, remote computers, all right? Now, the standard port number, uh, if you care, um, which later in time I don't really care about this as much because I, I have I have Telnet do stuff later, okay? But the way you would connect to another computer, like the, you'd connect to a Telnet server, and that server would be on port 23, okay? It's just more of an FYI. Um, and a port, it's like, you know, a network connection, of like which door you're going to. And like a, yeah, like a door number for an apartment or something like that, or, or a business building or something like that. Like door number 23, that's basically what we're doing. All right. And the only thing is, do not, do not use Telnet for connecting to remote terminals. And this is, unless case, like you have no other option or something like that. This is not what I'm going to use Telnet for. This is not what this talk is about. Okay. Um, that the reason why, and like, you know, any cybersecurity book, they always tell you like, oh, never use Telnet. It's terrible. It's horrible. The reason why they're saying that is because like when you connect to a server and stuff like that, it's all, it's referred to as it's all, all the traffic that you're typing to that computer is all in plain text, meaning it's not encrypted at all, which is bad because like there's usually a part where you, you know, before you do anything, you connect to a computer and then you type your, like your username and password. The problem is all of that is literally sent just over the network. It's, a, it's like sending a postcard with your password written on it, right? That'd be ridiculous. So that's why you don't do this anymore. Uh, back in the day when people weren't as worried about a bunch of security stuff, the, uh, Telnet was used quite often, actually. All right? But that is not really uh, the situation anymore. So long story short, you don't use it to connect remotely like in that fashion anymore. All right? Instead, you should use something like What's referred to as SSH, which stands for the secure shell. All right. So real quick, let me give you kind of a demo of what I'm what I'm talking about here. This is an example of something of like if we were, you could still do this technically. Okay. Um, as long as you know you might have to create your own telnet server to make this happen. Okay. But um, what I'm doing here, so here's that command line stuff, and what I'm doing is I'm typing, say, Telnet, and then the remote computer's IP address, okay? So it's like a local local area network LAN address thing. And so if there's a Telnet server, which in this case I'm demoing there is, that's what that's all we're doing here. I just have this in red to let you know, like, seriously, don't, don't use this connect <laughs> for remote terminals, all right? Um, so it goes to the motions, tries to connect, connects, da da tells some other stuff, oh, you're on some Linux system, blah, blah, blah. So like in this case, say like, uh, you know, I, I told you before, my my user in my local system was, my username on my local system is junk text. Well, say on this remote computer, I have a different uh, account name, such as cool guy, right? So boom, I type in cool guy. This is all blank here for the password thing. It's a kind of a standard security feature when you connect to like a Linux or a Unix system and stuff like that. So it's not that I have no password, it's just that when I type the characters, it doesn't actually tell you how many characters I typed. So it's uh, kind of enhanced security in that way, right? So this is implied like I typed the correct password, boom, and now I'm like logged in. It's like, oh, well, your last time you logged in was such and such date, da 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 from and like whatever your computer was at the time. Your This is like my local computer. All right, so the server is 192.168.0.0. Two, and this is like the local computer, like my, my local machine. Okay, so that's why there's different uh, 
address is right there. Anyways, so I connected. It tells me when I connected last time, blah, blah, blah. Oh, welcome back. You have new mail or something like that. There's ways to read mail in the system. Anyways, that's the gist. Now we're like connected and we have like a slightly different looking prompt here. So now instead of junk text, it says cool guy at, and this is like the server uh, server address now. Okay, so it's different. And then, but I can still issue like standard commands. This is implying this got like a Linux system. Well, it, is, it tells you it's a Linux system. And then so I uh, I type say who am I now, and it says now it says cool guy. All right. So again, a lot of you probably already know this. I just want to cover this in case anybody's a little bit lost. All right. So just for effect uh, I don't want to move on from that and not explain this if you are actually going to connect remotely to a terminal to issue commands you know do something on another system you would instead use SSH and there's a pro that's uh, similar I'm gonna do it this way so it's like SSH user account name because it's different than my current one so I'll do cool guy at that uh, server I'm connecting to it goes through some motions one of the things you do want to if possible because you'll get these warning messages like oh the authenticity blah 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 can't be established like it'd be great actually if you just can confirm that this is literally like this uh, key fingerprint for that server to make sure you're not like connecting to some uh, you know kind of uh, rogue machine that is trying to harvest your stuff okay uh, so there's like another process that you may want to go through before even connecting to like legitimately confirm this is like the server's fingerprint thing because it's telling you hey do you want to keep connecting like do you trust connecting to this uh, you know if all goes well we'll just say yes say we did that all right uh, anyways so I typed yes and it's like okay blah 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 this is we're gonna trust the system we're gonna add it to a list of known hosts and da 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 and then here it's like oh type the person's password so it's blank again it's implying it's the correct password oh welcome back Da -da, similar to what you just seen right and now uh, it looks like this say cool guy yeah, blah, blah. and you do something similar now cool guy all right anyways use SSH if this is what you're doing okay remote terminal stuff now again I'm not talking about remote terminals here just be just be clear instead all right so it's like well all right so so why is telnet still useful okay Again, reminder, don't use Telnet at all for remote terminals. Highly insecure. Don't do that. Now, the point that I'm driving over here, though, is like this big, nice, highlighted section, okay? Is that this is what's super cool, actually. Uh, you you kind of have the power of the Internet at your fingertips with Telnet if you know what you're doing, okay? So, that's the thing. Like, it gives you, you can talk with any kind of system out there any kind of networking proto protocol you're not limited to port 23 for instance you can connect to basically any port number you want okay like yeah so uh, I'll just show and that's what I'm gonna kind of demonstrate for you you can do a lot of a lot of fun stuff okay um, I think that's my last slide let me double check yeah okay we got to that all right now um, here's the thing now it's not really that essential if you're not following along with literally running this program or something like that, feel free if you want to. Though it's not it's not a hard requirement because I've designed this uh, workshop slash talk so that all people can kind of learn and explore. Okay, but if you want to play around, okay, this is where uh, uh, you know all the code is out there. I've, I've built a little uh, script thing um, that. Uh, I'm calling as uh, this thing, this name right here. Now, just this is uh, so this is the actual official program name, okay? But you, hey, listen, no, you cannot pronounce it like Telnet, muhu ha ha ha. No, no, that, like I told you at the start, right? You have to, you got to pronounce this right. You got to say Telnet. <laughs> All right, I'm just joking. All right. <laughs> uh, anyways, so. Check this out. You know, this is my homepage currently. The from time, you know, I'm gonna be update my site and things like that later in time. If you're watching this video or something like that, uh, you know, six months from now, it's not gonna show up right on my homepage, most likely. So where you would go is click on say software projects, and kind of go from there. You'll find it. All right. So 
if you are here, just kind of click on this thing. It's going to take you to this other thing. I'll just tell you, blah, blah, blah. blah. This is how you, it's kind of cool. And it's a, uh, it's just a simple zip file. Okay, it's just, uh, currently, it's not the most intense program. But anyways, that is, uh, and then you'll open up, I'll just show you here. And I'm going to go through this code more. I'll kind of break it down. I, I actually tried to put, like, uh, useful comments throughout this whole thing so you can learn just by reading the source code. All right, because, all, look, all the cool people know how to write proper comments because they're documenting, you know, the algorithm and stuff, right? Because, oh, you, yeah, a lot of, yeah, you know what you're talking about. A lot of you people think you're cool and hip if you don't write comments. Try me nuts. All right. Anyways, so that's where we go. Now. Before I do this whole demo thing with this program, uh, let me kind of set you up of like how I even got into this whole situation, all right? And some background, right? Because I'm even saying here like, hey, look, remember, RFCs are your friend. Now, I'm going to pause there for a bit, this whole RFCs. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to explain that right now, okay? So. The thing is, there's this organization called the IETF. All right, and I'll scroll down. Check out, the, check them out. Learn about these folks. All right. So the IETF, that stands for the Internet Engineering Task Force. Okay. And look, they're even talking about this. Oh, something about blah blah blah. RFCs, which stands for requests, request for comments. If that doesn't resonate yet with you, learn about this. Okay, because look, here's another, if you click on that more, blah, 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 it's telling you, R, I'll just, memos, an RFC is, it's memos in the RFC document series contain technical and organizational notes about the internet. It's amazing, like this whole thing, it's like they, they document, they have like some of the smartest people ever that explain how like the internet works. And there's so many things to the internet, all right? There's different protocols, you know, there's, which is like different ways to connect to computers and like how do they connect? Like, what's the breakdown of everything? They literally tell you how this works. You don't even have to pay for it. It's fantastic. Okay. So, for instance, you say we dive further in. Here's this kind of a, uh, here's this uh, search site you could go through and blah, blah, blah. Oh, and check out some of these uh, new RFCs that they're creating all the time and documenting about a bunch of technical subjects that definitely learn, read about, like learn on this stuff. All right. So, now the thing is, what I'm going to be using Telnet or this program, for instance, is like so far like what I have it doing it's not the uh, most intense design uh, program uh, I have ideas where you can do kind of crazy stuff actually later with it but it actually does create basically two different bots all right the first one is it creates a uh, an HTTP bot which like that should hopefully sound familiar because like when you type in a website like HTTP and this one says HTTPS uh, colon slash slash some website junktext.com whatever right well what this one is is that and i'm being clear this is http this is the uh insecure one it's not encrypted okay now when you connect to my side it's the cool encrypted version stuff um but the thing is most even if you have a encrypted connection or whatever there's usually uh, uh websites they always have an HTTP presence, which is the insecure way to connect to a website. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why, for instance, uh, sites are now using more HTTPS. Uh, long story short, okay, because HTTP and HTTPS, the difference is one is secure and one is not really, right? Now, even if you're connecting to my site and there's not, you're not like logging in, all right, it's just that there could be what's referred to as say like a man in the middle attack where say you think you're actually connecting to my website where somebody else but instead you're actually connected to some uh, malicious attackers computer or something like that and say they uh, say they don't like me or something like that and so they could deface my site kind of indirectly like you connect to them go into junktext.com they like change up maybe my page looks similar but it's telling them to go like you know go go f yourself or something like that and it's like man this guy's me you know well that's the thing like there are ways you could do that so that's why a lot even sites like mine where you're not necessarily have you don't even have to log in or something like that 
It's just that a way to protect, say, the brand of the organization and stuff like that. So that's why a lot of organizations are using this, the HTTPS, the cool little lock process thing here, nice and secure. Um, doesn't matter, though. That's not what my focus is on this talk, right? Because the thing is, even connecting to the old school insecure kind of thing on a website, you can still get a lot of details. It can be kind of useful, all right? And uh, a bunch of other things, all right? And then after, it, so it connects, basically this, it connects a, a website, okay, it is then going to try to figure out, like, what kind of software, server software is used to power that website. Um, a lot of times they just basically tell you. And so that's what it does. My program goes out, snatches that detail, and then, just for uh, coolness, it then creates another, it creates an IRC bot, okay, hopefully you know what IRC is. If not, because I feel like the generation of the day, they're like, they do, a lot of them just don't know. I don't. I. I don't. Maybe one. Maybe one or two, of my students, and I've had like, hundreds. You know, of students. Like, um, a lot of them just don't know what this is. So IRC, it's a, it's a, it's a way to chat, uh, talk to each other, but it's not like Twitter or Facebook exactly. Even though, even though actually, it's just a message. Twitter, Twitter, all their hashtags and at signs of things, you know. They actually got all that basically from IRC of how they do things. All right. So I'll showcase later this whole IRC thing. Anyways, basic long story short, it creates a couple bots. One goes out and does some web sniffing and then it reports it to a chat chat. But it's doing two bots in that whole process. Okay. Um, now, so to have a like what I'm what I'll do, what I'm uh, what I'm doing with this whole program the telnet moo ha 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 thing right it is just automating what you could do you could actually do manually it's just kind of you got to be kind of a fast typer maybe uh to do certain things or to watch out for certain aspects so i'm just automating it to do kind of interesting things okay now of uh, but the thing with that when i'm talking about like i automated something what i'm talking about is i i first learned more of the details of say this HTTP protocol, like how does when like when your web browser connects to a website, how does that work? That's what I'm talking about. Like what what exactly is going on there, and such. Well, that's where I'm pointing to like this uh, these RFCs. They tell you how how that how this stuff works. All right. So for instance, if I search for you know RFC HTTP, I'm using DuckDuckGo. If you're not familiar, it's it's like Google, but it doesn't track you hopefully i mean that's what they claim anyways i'm using uh that i'm just searching for this okay so i'm just i'm saying i want to know the request for comment for http and this is the one of the ones that pops up is this 2616 thing so if you click over here right and this is the ietf folks again um i have it zoomed in here just because the text can be kind of small um blah 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 a bunch of people help create all this Okay. Now the thing is, though, it actually is this standard that we're looking at. This or, or this RFC it says RFC uh, two six one six. It's actually old. It's been obsoleted by other ones that have taken its place. Now, the th and other things have updated a bit and blah blah blah. The only thing is, by the way, sometimes these older RFCs can actually be uh, kind of more informative, like uh, more explanatory. Of some background and then you could look at like some of the updates and like oh wait what are we what has changed and stuff like that so but these are really long okay um, so for instance this uh, this thing it's actually talking about the I'll scroll down a bit more the uh, hypertext transfer protocol that's HTTP and it's talking about the 1.1 thing all right and I'll show you uh, an example of this whole when you see this 1.1 that is uh, uh, the basically the version that is described in this document. There's uh, there's there's newer versions of this, but this is pretty common still. Okay. Now this is kind of an older one. This is back in 1999 they created this. Okay. Blah blah blah. But there's a whole bunch of stuff. I'll just kind of page down. They give you all so look look like how long this is. Table of contents. You click around. It's pretty pretty great though it's like a bunch of free knowledge for you all right so blah 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 a whole bunch of things okay it's about time date formats and whatever okay 
So that's about HTTP stuff. And then let's see, say it's been obsolete and the first one is 7230. Well, I've already pulled that one up too. It's like, oh, now it's 2014. Okay, it's been moved on, but it's still, they still call it version 1.1 here. And this is uh, describing aspects about mission syntax and routing and da 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 and a bunch of more text, much more words you could read, right? Uh, and so forth. Go, you can go nuts on this whole RFC thing. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there. Now, let's see here. The other thing that, say, like, I'm telling you I'm going to create an, uh, an IRC bot, right? So here is one of the RFCs, and I'm pointing you right here. This is kind of a cool section that I use later. I use this thing called priv message. And this is why I use this RFC thing, because it's like, wait, how do I... Basically, it's like, how do I create like a rudimentary IRC bot. This thing told me how to do it. This is what I'm talking about. Like this is how you could learn how to do a bunch of stuff. All right. And one of the things say, for instance, like say you're a private message to this other user angel or whatever. Um, and they have this kind of, and I was like, I had to I learned about this whole uh, colon prefix thing. Was like it wasn't obvious that you had to do that kind of stuff. Which is why I do it later in code that I'll explain. Like this is where I got some of the details of, of the of this whole thing. All right. Now this print message thing is a little weird because it's actually uh, it's not just private messages. You can actually send it to like a channel. That's what I'm doing to, to have a talk to a channel. Okay. So this is the capability. This print message thing that you'll see later in code that that's what I'm doing. I'll scroll all the way to the top. This is talking about the this is IRC Internet Relay Chat. And da, da 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 a bunch of stuff, right? So read on that, and then you know, oh, a newer version, and this two eight one two or whatever. Some stuff here, blah blah blah. Okay, so you get the gist. It's a bunch of, uh, it's like a how-to guide of that's free that you can just learn how the whole internet works. Okay. Okay, so let me show you basically what. Um, like for instance, later I'm gonna go into this whole code thing. One of the ones that's kind of fun is actually uh, I'm not the biggest sports guy, but there's this uh, uh, organization called ESPN. So they they you know football, soccer, things like that. It's a big TV network and whatnot that tracks sports, right? One of the things that's kind of fascinating actually they they tell you a lot of details that if you connect to it through like Telnet or even just like regular Basically, it's telling your web browser stuff. It tells you this, this behind the scenes. That, this is just a comment if you're not familiar with uh, Python. Like I'm not setting this or anything like that. This is just my, this is more of a reference of like post-it note. Oh, this is what was reported at the time of, you know, currently July 2020. Over time, this is going to change or whatever, most likely. But I'll show you manually. How this basically works, okay? Because we'll go into the whole code thing later. Because I'm all I'm doing when I do the code thing, I'm just basically running the code and seeing the effect of it, all right? But I'll show you kind of like the building blocks of like what inspired me to create kind of how my program kind of kind of works, all right? Um, so, like, watch this. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to the uh, telnet or not telnet uh, local terminal thing that I pulled up, okay? Um, and it's just called terminal on uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu Linux. So watch this. I'm going to go, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go telnet, say www.espn.com. Now the thing is, if I, if I just press enter right now, it's going to literally try connecting to like a remote terminal server hosted on espn.com, which they're most likely not hosting because nobody does telnet servers really anymore. So I don't want to just stop there. I need to then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the port number 80. This is the unencrypted, you know, insecure HTTP, like where a web browser, a standard web browser would kind of go to. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start typing a little bit fast and then I'll break it down a little bit more from there. Okay. Because I got to type somewhat fast or else it can get it like time out on me. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to connect to ESPN.com. Here we go. All right, now I'm gonna type git slash p slash 1.1 host 
www.espn.com. Enter, enter. I got to press that twice. Now, what it's saying is a bunch of stuff that popped out at me. All right. Eventually, it's going to time out on me and like blah, 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 disconnected or whatever. But um, we can get a whole, what we're looking at here, I'll scroll up here, what, what I typed on this whole effect. So I basically created a rudimentary web browser. Seriously, just using this terminal thing that, uh, I mean, it doesn't do much for us, I guess, uh, or it may not seem like it. So I had to type it like this. What, what I was typing there was I want to get, I'm going to like get a page on that server, like a web page on that server. So what I'm doing is I'm, I want to get the home page. So this is like root, which is comes from Linux lingo and Unix culture because the internet was created on a Unix system. Okay, back when uh, you know Tim Berners Lee was doing stuff at CERN and whatnot. Anyways, so I type this thing. I'm, I'm going to get the home page, and I'm going to be using HTTP slash 1.1. Okay, which again, remember that. This whole thing, let me back up, blah, blah, blah. Look at this. You know, 1999, whatever. That Oh, and there's Tim Berners-Lee, right? So, yeah, I can see why he's part of this whole process. He uh, kind of helped create a lot of how the internet works. Like, the, at least the, uh, you know, websites connecting to all that kind of stuff. Anyhow, so then, um, sometimes it's not required, but to be safe, um... I also throw this in, I'm saying host, like which web host do I want to connect to? Because sometimes a server could have different uh, websites it's hosting and it gets kind of goofy uh, at times. Anyways, that's why I typed all this and I'm just typing exactly what I typed up there. Okay, so now what it's doing, it's saying, oh, uh, basically don't connect to this uh, unencrypted version of ESPN. It's like, say we connect over, I'm just going to open another tab. I'll just do ESPN.com, whatever. So it, it goes immediately to the HTTPS thing here, okay? Right there, okay? So that's that's why, and this is very common these days, that's why it's saying this whole thing after all this, like, uh, blah, 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 don't use this anymore. We've moved, we basically, it's hinting to you that it's, like, go, go look at... Uh, the secure stuff you should be why are you should connect to this unencrypted stuff they'll see they still keep this server alive kind of a thing just because uh, a lot of the web still kind of there's still a lot of how the web works that kind of defaults to this unencrypted stuff okay however what we're looking at is a lot of behind the scenes stuff okay so this is uh, all of this stuff these are all these server headers that get sent back to say a web browser and then eventually we get this page, okay? So this kind of, this is actually a HTML code now. It would be the most like boring website ever because all it would say was moved permanently, blah, blah, blah. We've moved to HTTPS, blah, 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 like ESPN.com stuff. And there's some link you'd click on to click that. Your web browser did, did not redirect you, okay? Now, that's what kind of what we're looking at. Now, check this out, though. What's super cool about when we connect to uh, ESPN here, and they actually have a lot of details that we could definitely study for other aspects later. But what I thought was interesting is just kind of checking out, like, what is what is reported on the server? And this one, um, you know, if we're going to take their word for it, which seems kind of weird, weirdly specific if they're lying to us or something like that, this might be legit of like the system that they're actually using. So what this is talking about, if you're not familiar, I'll break this down. What it's saying is it's using like this web server. They're using uh, Apache, which is very common. It's a very popular um, web server software to host websites, okay, uh, web pages, stuff like that. And it's saying that it's currently on Apache two, version 2.4.6. And it's referencing that it's on CentOS, which is a like uh, now it's a Red Hat sponsored system. So it's a red, it's basically like Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but like the uh, kind of free version basically. But a lot of people so use very dependable. Um, so it's using CentOS Linux system, and they also support. They might be using a lot of PHP stuff, which is a programming language really cool programming programming language actually 
um, and they're on uh, version 5.4 somewhat it's you know their PHP is up to like version 7 now um, let's see change me up php.net should be still version 7 right yeah version 7 okay um, but version 5 is you know still a lot of people still using version 5 because they can skip version 6 anyway anyways um, and then there it supports open SSL which is like uh, how you could securely connect to it and a lot of stuff right so it tells you a lot of details just on this little line here okay so that's what my program basically does it goes you, you tell it some website to go to it's gonna look for this server header and then it's gonna like it's gonna cherry pick out whatever it tells you okay so this could be really informative for different reasons. It doesn't have to even. I know. I get it. Like I, you know, I called my. Uh, I call. Uh, let me see. I'll close this down. Close that down. I called my program Telnet. <laughs> right. But it doesn't have to just be evil. It could be just about analysis, uh, things like that. It's just like what do we? You know, you just want to explore and understand the internet. It doesn't. It's not about just even evilness. Even though I guess if you were, you know, maliciously. Uh, had malicious intentions this might help you in trying to maybe break into the site or something like that and I'm not suggesting to do that I'm just saying that like this is how you could you know that's what I'm saying that you kind of like fingerprint the system in a, in a way okay um, you're kind of sniffing what what is what okay so it's giving you some details because there's a lot of options hosting websites of what you because what you could do all right, not everybody's doing the same thing. Anyways, that's what my program is basically doing. You could definitely enhance my program to do a lot more things because this looks kind of interesting. Talking about all this, talking about CloudFront, like da 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 da, like a whole bunch of details here, which pretty you know, in different headers here. This is the via thing and whatever. You can see server time stuff or whatever. Okay, so um, and that's for this server. Not and oh, by the way. Actually, before I move on, not every server actually, uh, not every web server actually, they don't even, some of them don't actually even report this, okay? Um, you know, because I, like I just said, they worry that it's maybe a security issue or whatever, or sometimes they'll actually change this, so like, say it's literally ran on Apache, but you could have it say that it's ran on like, uh, I like Pi, whatever, like you could just type whatever you want, okay? Um, so sometimes you got to take this with a grain of salt when you get these types of details but that's basically what we're doing we connected to this website and my program is looking for this server header and just curious what it is and then it reports that to a chat channel all right and then yeah so then eventually it closed out and such okay so that's kind of the background a slow walking down of basically what my program is automating okay um and you can see I'm not making this up. It's not like baked into my program or something like that. So let's uh, let's just do it. Let's just, uh, I'm just gonna connect over on my system here. Oh, I have a uh, so I have a chat channel. This is okay. Just so you know, I'm I'm using uh, so the uh, Fnet crowd. I hope you don't hate me, but uh, so this is on IRC. Okay, this is that chat thing, which like say you know or hackers that plant hackers on planet Earth, right? So I'm supposed to buy 2600. Well, I'm connected to their server too. What are people talking about here? Blah, blah, blah. Ooh, somebody got kicked. <laughs> Anyways, people talk, right? It could be whatever. And then there's like, say, Freenode, which is more uh, business friendly. Good resource too. I got a bunch of these channels. That's why, like, you know, say chat, people are talking about whatever. Huh, somebody else got kicked. Anyways, um, or maybe he's kicking himself or. Right. Anyway, it doesn't matter. People are just talking out here. Okay, so, um, boom, 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 here, like, I'm, I'm joined on to uh, this network, this IRC network, because there's different networks out there, and I'm connected to FNet, again, I hope the FNet people don't hate me for doing this, I, I just joined this, so in my program, it's kind of defaults to connecting in this way. This is not my official channel. This is not anything. It's just like you know, showcasing an example, I guess, in the program. So if you join this later, like I, I, I don't really have control of this whole channel. It's not, it's not me. Don't get mad at me. 
this is basically all I'm using it for is to just kind of showcase that it, my program can report to an IRC channel. Okay. Um, so that's that. So like, so, so for instance, if I just started typing like "hi," blah blah blah, right? It's just that's what I'm talking about. You can just talk. Okay. Just in case you still don't know what an IRC channel is about, check it out. Okay. But my program is automatically. It's going to create a bot. Okay. And it's going to connect and tell us what we just saw manually on ESPN. All right. So check this out. I'm going to go to my program code now. I'm just gonna run the code, okay? And then you could, I could break this down somewhat quickly because I don't want to spend too much time, uh, since I don't have that much time with my whole talk here, anyways. And such, da 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 da, blah blah blah. So watch this. Let's just uh, cross our fingers. It should work just fine. I'm just gonna try to run my code now. Let's see, if we're gonna, we're gonna go out there, talk to ESPN.com. It should hopefully get the details, the same details we just saw, and bounce over to IRC and report it. All right, here, so here we go. I'm gonna click on run. Boom, da da da. I'm gonna switch over to uh, the IRC thing, okay? Because eventually we will, maybe I'll kind of go back and forth. There's a little built-in de delays that I, de I do intentionally because, well, as you saw, some folks that were like, accidentally it's called flooding the IRC like network, that if they think that you are, uh, like you could post too much content Oh, here's my bot joined on. And here we go. Let's see here. Hold on. Woo! There we go. Woo! Right? <laughs> now, my bot's going to leave. Okay, I just have it built in because it's not the most advanced IRC bot right now. All right. So, and then I just have it leave in about an hour-ish or so. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Um, so, that went away. Okay, so that is the effect. That's the coolness of this whole talk. All right? And you can definitely play around with it. Just do a lot of fun things. So what it what I have it designed to do currently? So I had it connect to ESPN.com, okay, and then it's just trying to cherry pick out that server header and let us know what it was, okay. So it's telling us server like the server software reported, and that, it's that same stuff before that Apache da 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 da, da CentOS PHP stuff, everything that they told us. So yeah, so that's maybe I don't know maybe it's not the most exciting uh, demo ever, but. Uh, that's the whole beauty of this whole thing. Now, um, if you decide to change and play with my code later, first of all, it's under the uh, the AGPL, the Afero GPL, because I'm a huge open source advocate. So definitely, you can definitely change it. You know, uh, you know, it's got to be. <laughs> so you, uh, your changes need to be under the AGPL. You know, keep going with copyleft, because uh, open source is cool. Or you know, because uh, I know other people like saying uh, free software. Or you could say floss, right? I kind of respect. I don't like to each their own, right? Open source or free software. I kind of wish we'd stop having kind of a war between the between words here. Anyways, it's all, all you can see the code and play with it, change it, things like that. Feel free. Um, so yeah, let me just do a quick drill down of my code because I actually spent a lot of time um, trying to document this really well. So and then this is locally, you can see kind of what's going on. Da, 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 da. It's telling you play by play, so um, some status updates of what it just did. Uh, I'm going to minimize this for now, okay? So you can see more code. Um, so, anyways, yeah, my uh, my program, it's actually kind of a a short script. What? There's only 118 lines of code here, but that's including I I got a lot of uh, comments here. I did that intentionally. Uh, so that you could read it flow by flow uh, and know what is going on, right? Because it helps me remember because, you know, six, th six months from now, if I don't look at this code and I come back to it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's why I did all this, all right? Um, it, even though it seems maybe kind of a simplistic style program, okay, there's actually a lot of uh, engineering that went into this thing. Um, I was even trying to enhance this because what I think would be interesting later that if I have more time, to make this actually like a full kind of command line uh, program. And you could do more, way more than the tippy tip of what I'm even showing here. Uh, there's a lot of things you could explore email servers or um, you know, whatever else, uh, some game server. You could connect to that using Telnet and play with it. Uh, there's a bunch of, uh, yeah, you can do a lot of things with Telnet. You just gotta kinda 
learn how things work and uh, kind of go from there, right? And so anyways, the basic flow, if you want to uh, experiment a little bit, is this is the most one of the most critical things is w like which website do you want to connect to, okay? And you want to be careful that like, say, for instance, if you go to some resource, like, okay, say be, uh, say, I'm gonna go back up here, I'll just click on my home page or whatever. So mine defaults, I actually don't use, you know how like a lot of websites, it's like www dot whatever. I actually don't do that. Um, kind of get away from that old school style stuff. And my, so my whole, my, my primary preferred website, it connects to like HTTPS colon slash slash junktext.com, right? But if we were connecting to, so if I just, but if we were doing this ESPN thing, right, ESPN, notice how they actually do prefer their primary uh, reference starts with www, okay? So what I would recommend is a tip. You may just want to use a regular web browser, connect to the site, see what is it, it pointing you to generally. That is when you'll know what to really type in here. Okay, um, so this is kind of a tip for you, all right? And then, so these are just some other examples that have no effect. Anything that starts with this hashtag looking thing in Python is just a comment. So it's just freeform text. So th these things currently are not doing anything. I just have done this in the past on these sites and I'm just telling you what's what, what was reported at the time. Okay, so like 2600, they're using Apache apparently, all right? Um, now I have, this is where you would put in some setting of like, well, which IRC server do you want to connect to? Okay, so this is, uh, this is actually FNet. Um, and I'm doing this because some IRC servers, they're kind of obnoxious to deal. They like want you to connect securely and all this other kind of stuff. I get why they're doing that, but if you just want something kind of easy, and that's what I'm saying, like in this server, it's pretty nice to bots. Like it doesn't really ban you immediately outright and such. Uh, this is which port number you're connecting to. Okay, blah, blah, blah. You can see what other things here. This is where you would specify which channel do you want to connect to. Okay, so what I'm saying is IRC has many different channels. So in this case, when I'm connecting to FNet and it's just connected to that thing here, tell, there was, it starts with hashtag here. Hashtag Telnet. <laughs> right? So that's what's going on of why everything's working in this case. If you were playing around with say 2600's network or something like that, they have dip, so channel 2600 or DEF CON or HOPE or my so-called official channel, whatever. <laughs> I don't really do much, I mean, I just started it like a week ago. Feel free to join on and chat with me later. Um, I'm also gonna be, uh, you know, since we have uh, recording this ahead of time, if you're watching, you know, you could also jump on this and ask me questions as you're watching the video. So, Anyways, I'm bouncing back over to Fnet here, and I just created this channel because you can do that. You can create your own channel, and that's what it's doing. Okay, this is where you'd set that there. Uh, some other details: what you want to call the bot. Da 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 da. Okay, and you can read through the code because, like, what it's doing, it's just like. So in this case, it is actually going to create a Telnet bot on HTTP. It's using the mat. You can read more on how this all works later. And that's where, remember how I was doing that get slash HTTP slash 1.1? Boom, that's what I'm saying. I've just automated this process, okay? And then that host, whatever you type for the host, stuff like that, and then they have to do enter, enter twice. That's why that's going on, all right? And then all it does is it just waits for 15 seconds, get some stuff, times it out eventually, okay? Or, or if you see this message or whatever. Um, Closes that out. We got a bunch of details, okay, and then it like converts all these details to something that Python can do something with. That's what all this code's about. Blah 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 blah. Now that then we're gonna go through basically this stuff. It's uh, it's copy and pasting all this text, and then it, it's going to look for this thing, okay. So that is what all this magic is about. Blah 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 blah. blah. Like if we found that, that's great. If not. I just have it reported as unknown. Some servers don't have that. Like Microsoft.com currently. If you try to use that, it'll just say you'll get this response back to you. The reason why is not every server even reports this header thing. Okay. 
Then there's a bit of nuance, like feel free to dive into this code of IRC stuff later. It was kind of finicky actually trying to get this all working. Like even just having, oh, I need a space. I need to press basically enter here, but like not here. It's kind of like, it was not obvious going through all of these, this situation here. All right. So, but I had, I was looking at the RFC later to figure all this out. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Like it like connects logs in. I do have it built in some wait times, like sleep for five seconds, sleep for five seconds, sleep for five. The reason why I don't want to sit there and ping the server too much, like, you know, um, you want to give it a little bit of time to make it not seem like you're just a bot, even, you know, even though I am a bot. Well, in this case, right? So, da da da, more code stuff goes on, and then eventually we get, and that's what I was talking about that priv message thing when I was talking about that earlier. That's why I use this capability to talk. It's actually talking to the channel. It's kind of a weirdly named a private message. Private message to everybody on the channel. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway, that's what they called it. Um, and that's what happens. And then that's why later, you know, my bot eventually timed out because I just had it sleep 15 seconds and then close it out. Now, the thing is, though, I'm even saying, like, uh, this could be enhanced a lot more. Like, you could make it a true bot where you, like, tell the bot to do things. Oh, now go check out this website and tell me what that server is or whatever like you could do a bunch of things another thing that i was actually working on which i i didn't want to finish up completely uh, it was i felt like it might be a little too confusing as i was actually creating a different version of this whole thing where it actually would connect to say like like five different uh websites and like get all of those details and then eventually you'd get like five things reported in the channel over here or something like that right that's great but there's a lot of kind of things you got to worry about flooding IRC and there's way more code that was going into all that so I'm like right, you know what we're gonna just stick with this basic version right now all right so that's the that's skinny all right uh, maybe for effect let's change it up to something else here uh, da -da -da. you can see let's do 2600 right boom no I'll just run the code again. Okay. Oh, and you, what you're going to notice is the bot name. I have it to kind of make so that when you're looking at the chat channel later, you could tell like at basically this is using a 24 hour time frame. So at 231, that's when the bot got created and eventually reported to us on RSC. That's, that's, it's a timestamp on this bot name. So you're going to see a different timestamp now. That's, so I built it in just to make it. I don't know, kind of more informative. So now I'm going to switch it to 2600, or obviously you put whatever website you care. I'll just run it again real quick. Boom. It's doing some stuff. We can maybe watch. Oh, see, it's saying it's Apache. It's already connecting to IRC, doing some stuff. Uh, joining the IRC channel. Should jump on any minute here. There we go. Now it's at 243, 1443. And then we'll give it a sec. And boom, 2600, server's Apache. And then, the you know, like I said, the bot's going to leave us in a sec. Um, so anyways, I hope this was informative. And uh, you can, what I'm, you know, if you if you change up the code, make it better, please let me know. Like, uh, you know, make it make it cooler, things like that. Uh, obviously, you'll get credit for wh whatever you create. Uh, you know, or if you fork it and you do something kind of crazy beyond this, that's cool. Just let me know. I think it would be kind of interesting. So, yeah, hope you learned a lot. And I hope... Uh, Everybody has a good day. I'm going to stick around for Q&A when you're, you know, the folks that are actually connected to the conference thing. And uh, you can, can ask me any questions or whatever. All right? Okay. All right. Take care. All right. What do you guys all think about that situation? <clears throat> Hope you learned some stuff. Um, let's see. I'll, I'll share my my ugly mug too, I guess. Let's see. Yeah, and then I maybe stop in this thing too. So yeah, it's kind of fun, like play around with that stuff. Um, but yeah, RFCs did. Uh, you know, a lot of people familiar with that because a lot of people. I don't know. It's just like they don't know. You can learn basically a whole bunch of things. <laughs>
That's good, PH. You laugh, cried. I know. Um. Uh, yeah, and yeah, the code is out there. Uh, it's just on, you know, you can, uh, like, uh, like Alicia's saying in the shared notes section. Um. I was just reading some of these uh, chat stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I'll send the. Okay, Hope has a recording suite. That's good. Um, yeah, I'm actually impressed with this software, this BBB thing, because like I also teach, right? And I'm a big open source guy. I'm like, man, we need to like everything's on Zoom and stuff. I want more open source stuff taking over. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. Has anybody done anything kind of similar to like what I was maybe doing? You know, I'm sure there's because I've seen people that you could maybe do. You could that's the thing you could probably use like Netcat and things like that. Um, so I think that like telling that like you know you could probably do similar stuff. I don't know if there's a. I think it kind of lets you do what you want as well. Still, so I know I'm a bookshelf. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. How was that? Uh, uh, Harry Berto. Am I saying that right? Harry Berto, the Discord bot. Yeah, it's tricky creating bots because, like, you know, especially you want it to be. Uh, user friendly i guess or something you know usable for other people that's where it gets a little tricky doing that stuff um so yeah i hope you learned a lot i know that other talks are going on so it's cool if you got if you're gonna bounce out or something like that uh, no offenses and all that so i'm just i'm just glad so many people showed up um yeah but that was a, it was fun trying to get everything set up here And then I was seeing, I don't know if, uh, yeah, there's so far five of us in the unofficial Telnet Moo ha 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 channel on IRC. Um, so that's pretty cool because I've seen folks running the bot. I guess there's a few technical things going on wrong. I think it has to stem with um, something with the IRC server from where you're connecting where you get like that broken pipe message. Uh, but it is because one person was saying that they're connected to IRC, but I don't know. There's sometimes those IRC servers get all finicky when you try to do that kind of stuff. Um, it's like I, I kind of hope and pray when my uh, when I try to even just connect to Fnet, like because I'm using a VPN and it's like sometimes I it does like I have a blacklisted IP and stuff. So I'm like, oh man, I gotta like reconnect and stuff. So, so that's when the thing. I when I first tried to join it, um, I was just going from what you were saying and I typed in, uh, you know, Telnet and wahaha, ha, ha, uh, yeah. but I did it all in lowercase. And of course I was in an empty room and, oh. so then I went, and I looked at your code and was like, Oh, it's capital T, right? Like, okay. Yeah. And, and, uh, IRC channel names are case sensitive. So that's important yeah. to note. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah, that's a good good tip there. Um. So, and then let's see. You were. I was checking, and you you were able to get the uh, bot to run. On there. I didn't actually run the code. I just read the code. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then and then opened up the IRC channel so okay. that I can see. Yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating how much, how much as you saw some of the examples of like ESPN, they have like they give you so many details about everything. It's pretty pretty cool actually. Um, and there's, you know, a whole bunch of other things you can play around with this stuff. Like another thing that I think would be interesting, like even if, uh, you know, you gamers out there or something like that, like you, because I'm sure you could basically create a rudimentary Telnet bot client thing to connect to like whatever gaming environment you like and you you know it'd be trickier though because they don't like to a lot of times those games don't like to explain their 
their network code of how, like how you talk to servers. But I'm sure you could like if you figure it out, um, you could basically expand on what I have. Um, so. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, well, I don't know. Like, I was just kind of scanning the field a little bit of different servers. Uh, I mean, let me know if you find any other interesting ones out, uh, like, um, responded to uh, Zenji. Um, so, the, uh, yeah, it, it's just kind of um, one way to kind of uh, understand what companies are doing, you know, like, or what they're, what they're on and stuff like that. So, um, you know, just different hosting environments and stuff like that. Like for instance, I was checking out a new uh, a news network, right? And they have like it, it. This could actually be useful for like job interviews in a way. Like not so much like sh showing the code or whatever. It's more of like, say you're going for a, to be a software engineer or something like that, and you want to figure out their tech stack, right? Well, one of the things it's like that I do is I check out their server software that's reported. Um, and that can help me kind of speak their geek, you know, um, like, Oh, I see you guys are using uh, Nginx or something like that. And they're like, well, how'd you know that? I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> uh, so it could uh, be helpful in that realm too. Um, But, uh, but that's all I got. Let me know. Uh, you, you know, I don't know if some folks are just idling out right now, but I'm, I'm here for you. Any other kind of oddball questions? Um, Somebody just ran the uh, the script because I just saw Waha. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And who's never heard of IRC? Y'all killing me. Like, I'm trying I'm trying to make more people. I even had one time extra credit for my students. To like connect to IRC and create it <laughs> and create like a username and stuff. It took uh, a lot of people were like, "I, oh my goodness, never knew." So if that's if that's you're in the crowd, I'm not making fun of you necessarily, but definitely check it out. It's super cool. Um. Uh. Yeah. That's that's good. I know like Leisha and and others were joining on playing around. So. Yeah. Yeah. And who liked that joke at the start, right? A baby computer calls his father data. Huh? That's fun, right? Um let's see, you want you want another uh good joke, I guess, before you head out. Uh okay, what what do uh what to what do lawyers wear to work? Lawsuits. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just this is where I get brings me joy. Okay. You could say right. You could say briefs too. Ph. I like that. Ah, uh, you know you liked it, Leisha. Don't lie. <laughs> um. I'm actually in the process of one of the things I might actually sw switch my bot code around to uh, to Java. Maybe, you know, I'm kind of multilingual in that sense. Because um, one of the things I noticed is like there's because I love Python. It's awesome. But like, um, yeah, I noticed there's like a huge like the cyber sec cybersecurity community is all rallied behind Python, which is cool. I love Python, but I feel like Java needs some love there, too. I'm like, well, I could, I could do this in Java. Well, so, I don't know. I might, you might see that later in time. Um, so, yeah, I would uh, like Ellie's talking about one of the things. If you're not familiar with IRC, is it? But most networks, some networks actually mask you automatically. But most networks, when you connect, it's exposing your IP address. So that's why, like, it can be very useful if you connect to like a VPN, or even you, 
it's not maybe as common, but you could also connect to like a uh, like a Sox Five proxy or something like that. Um, you know, I the VPN I'm using is a uh, private internet access because I like how they're like all into open source stuff and whatnot. And I I don't know if it's if they got their client completely open source, but I know they're in the works of doing all that. Um, so, you know, and they got it all working on Linux and stuff too. So, yeah. So that's the only one drawback, I guess, of the whole IRC experience. Like if you're not used to that, um, that you could kind of expose yourself of like, you know, your network and stuff. Usually it's not as, I mean, because a lot of times people know your I, your ISP and things like that. Um, so, and depending on how like exposed you are, you know, there could be problems with that. So, I don't know. yeah. Does anybody plan to like enhance the code at all? I'm just curious. Just like, I go for it. That'd be, be kind of neat. Um, yeah. What are you? What are you? What are you thinking over there, Zenji? One of the things, just as a heads up, is like my bot like currently works great for HTTP, like that slash 1.1 version of the protocol. It does not play nice right now with HTTP slash two which is like the hip new version that's out there. But not every server is using that. It's kind of hit and miss. Um, but uh, that's one of the things I'll probably try to improve too so that it's like more usable across things. Um, so. And maybe improving the, the bot code. And yeah, because I was going nuts. I was like, I was making uh, making it so you could like have it, you know, Oh, check out the, these five websites, or you just give it a list of sites or something like that, and it automatically goes through different things and checks it out. Um, so, yeah, that's the thing. You could like, uh, you could definitely use other languages because a lot of these languages, as long as you can find like, uh, they usually always have like a Telnet library, or like there's somebody who's created like kind of like de facto. Um, kind of telling that uh, client for that language. For instance, like Java, Apache, they created like the te the, a telnet uh, client for that. So, you know, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you can definitely do this in other languages. So, um, yep. Yeah, and if you, you change it up, like, let me know, like, or just do it and go or something. So, anyways, it's cool. If you got to go, no worries. Um, I appreciate uh, everyone's time. But I'll stick around if anybody has any oddball things or whatever. Um, yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem, uh, uh, Harry Berto. <laughs>